Hello， 大家好，嚟到最后一集嘅拜仁我嚟啦。咁喺今集咧，我哋会一齐去睇下德国嘅楼，咁同埋咧睇下德国嘅土地问题。咁土地问题咧喺香港就听得多啦，但系原来喺德国某几个城市租楼嘅话咧，亦都会遇到同样嘅问题。德国租楼同香港一样，都有啲网站可以睇下楼嘅相，但系有几个资料同香港就好唔同下。第一，德文嘅房间系 d u s t i m m e r 不过佢哋嘅屋就将客厅归纳为房间嘅一种，所以喺网上见到嘅三房，其实即系香港嘅两房单位。第二，德国嘅租金有分冷租 （count meter） 同埋暖租。分 meter， 冷租咧就即系净租金，而暖租咧就系加埋水电煤杂费之后嘅价钱啦。第三，德国除咗一般水电煤，仲有一个一定要俾嘅杂费，就系、是、电视税 （room f o n e by t r u c k 啦。无论你屋企有冇电视，都一定要交呢个税，因为呢个税项会俾咗德国嘅公共电视台同埋电台去支持佢哋嘅日常营运。如果唔記得或者係冇交嘅話，係會被罰款嘅。啱啱睇完德國啲樓，感覺上係咪好大呢？但係咧喺德國某幾個城市租樓呢，亦都係好困難嘅、哦。例如柏林同埋慕尼黑，因為佢哋吸引咗好多人去嗰度工作啦，所以咧價格正常嘅樓盤咧，可以話係一盤難求嘅。曾经喺香港歌德学院教德文嘅 Sebastian， 最近翻咗慕尼黑工作。佢咧今次就同我哋一齐分享佢喺慕尼黑租楼嘅心路历程。Hello， wie geht's？ Ich heiße Sebastian。Uh, my name is Sebastian， and I used to live in Hong Kong and work at the Goethe Institute there。Um, at the end of May 2022， I moved back to Germany。And I'm now working at Goethe Institute headquarters in Munich. So, how did I find my apartment? Well, I haven't found a permanent apartment yet.、Um, in the first month in Germany, I lived in an Airbnb, and now I live in an apartment by a former former colleague、uh, of the Goethe Institute Hong Kong for two months.、Um, and in this time, I'm looking for a permanent apartment. Uh, when looking for an apartment, I feel like the apartment prices are almost the same as in Hong Kong, although、uh, apartment sizes will probably differ, and also things that are add-ons to the apartment. For example, it's possible that you can find apartments here that have a balcony or even a small garden in the back, but of course, then these apartments are highly sought after. How am I looking for apartments? Well, first of all, obviously on the internet and on apps.、Um, these apps and websites usually start with IMMO. So there is ImmoScout24, ImmoWelt, ImmoNet, and、um, whenever there is a new apartment popping up, it's very important to contact the people right away because many people will usually be sending emails. So. These people are looking for the first ones to respond to the ad, and also when you show up to view the apartment in the very popular areas, there might also be very long lines.、Um, I've also heard the strategy that you should post an ad in a paper newspaper. Now you might ask why a paper newspaper? Older landlords will be checking the paper, and it's more likely that they will look in the newspapers. And since they are not digital natives. They will. They do not want to check the internet or cannot check the internet. So that's why using the newspaper might be a good idea. Very important also is vitamin B, vitamin B, and B here stands for the German Beziehungen, so relations or relationships, and that means the people that you know. So friends that I have in Munich and colleagues who I've met at work. I'm always asking questions like, "How did you find your apartment? What was your strategy?、Uh, can you give me any hints on where to look?" And most importantly, 
do you happen to know of any apartment becoming available soon? So through that, I've heard other people getting apartments and I'm at this moment also trying to get an apartment through another colleague. Yeah, so that's it for now from me. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you got to learn something and bye bye. Tschüss. Sebastian 翻咗家鄉，大家應該都好唔捨得，不過都要祝佢好運，希望佢快啲揾到樓啦。另一位喺慕尼黑住嘅朋友咧，係香港人 Mora， 咁佢最近咧喺慕尼黑嗰度咧，仲喺度揾緊樓嘅，但係咧之前佢租樓嘅時候就差啲俾人呃啦。事完佢喺租屋網約咗個業主睇樓。但系佢留意到业主租俾佢嘅态度实在太轻松啦，连一啲收入证明嘅文件都唔睇。于是佢喺交定金之前咧，就去咗德国嘅填土厅 Groom Book， 提供咗租约俾职员去翻查记录，发现原来个业主唔系见嗰个人嚟嘅，所以非常之好彩咁冇俾人呃钱。似乎喺慕尼黑住嘅朋友咧，都已经接受咗啊，租楼系好困难呢一个定律。咁所以咧，喺租楼嘅过程入边，太顺利或者太简单，反而系容易令佢哋起疑心嘅。一连八集嘅拜仁我嚟啦，就嚟到呢度。今集咧特别咧想明谢翻 WhatsApp Group 香港人在慕尼黑嘅帮手，提供一啲有用嘅资料。另外，今集我有最后一份手信。系之前喺纺织业博物馆买咗两条拜仁州嘅格仔毛巾，如果你想抽到嘅话，就记得答啱以下问题啦。Sebastian 喺访问入边提到嘅 Vitamin B 系乜嘢嘢咧？咁我哋有机会再见啦 ，Auf Wiedersehen。Auf